Today, you're gonna to learn about HTTP status code 500, what it is, why it's important, and how to deal with it. We're also gonna do a comprehensive overview of web protocol basics and kind of a fundamental understanding of how the internet works. I'm Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. So before we dive into HTTP status code 500, I wanna talk a little bit about HTTP protocol basics and kind of how this all works in conjunction with any status code that you might see out there on your website. The internet is made up really of two core things and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors and 500 block will be for server errors. So that means the client made a good request, but the server didn't complete it. So something is wrong on the server side. Right? I'm in Chrome, I request the website. I did everything right on my end, but something's wrong with the server, right? So like a 500, an internal server error, maybe a 502, bad gateway, 503, service unavailable, 504, gateway timeout. The broad idea here is that 500 errors are server problems, not client problems. Okay, HTTP status code 500, the world famous internal server error. So anytime you're seeing a 500, keep in mind, anything on the 500 block is a server error, not a client side error. So the 500 error is a classic. This is just a general server problem. It means there's a problem with your server, but the server doesn't know exactly what that problem is. This isn't good. You wanna fix this as soon as possible. Contact your web host immediately and try and get this one sorted. Unfortunately, Almost all the time, the only answer here is to contact your host. There's usually not a ton that you can do manually, or if you can do it manually, you're usually way slower than contacting your web host. They can usually identify this much, much faster. So contact them if you're seeing this problem. This is a general server issue, and it's nothing on the client side. You wanna get this sorted as soon as possible. So that's it. That's all there really is to HTTP status code 500. So I hope that was useful. If it was helpful and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're watching on YouTube, I'd love a comment. Are you seeing HTTP status code 500? How are you gonna deal with it? What's the problem? I'd love to hear from you. I read every single comment. Finally, if you want our comprehensive HTTP status code guide, we have one for you. Go ahead and click that link down below to clickminded.com and get the free guide and a tool to check all of our URLs and the HTTP status code associated with them. Thanks a lot.